Hello, my name is Jim McKenzie, and I work for the Mariposa County Resource Conservation District. This is the fourth video in our series on managing oaks. It documents a few simple steps for landowners to follow if they want to propagate oak trees on their property. The two images you see here show a seedling valley oak. In the right-hand image, the seedling is housed in a protective tube of plastic mesh, which allows the acorn and plant to avoid being disturbed by feeding wildlife, such as squirrels and deer. The protective tube is held in place by two wooden rods, which, in this case, happen to be made of bamboo. Steel rods work too. The process as explained in this video would be useful for a landowner who wants to propagate a few new oak trees on his or her property. It could also be useful for someone who has had some vegetation loss due to a wildfire and wishes to include tree planting in the restoration project. This image reviews for you how the Oak series is organized. Of particular interest now is that the first video in the series documents the various oak species to be found in the central Sierra foothills. You should use the information in that video to understand the range, habitat, and other needs and requirements your planting site must meet in order for the oak species you are planting to grow and be successful. You must also understand that there are two different categories of oaks. In this video, we will label them white and red. Your acorn species belongs to one or the other of these. Each category has different germination behavior, and this determines the length of time your acorns need to spend in a refrigerator prior to planting. Gather your acorns in the fall. Ideally, the acorns you gather should be green, turning brown, and the acorns you gather should be from your neighborhood to assure their acclimatization to the local environment. If the cap is still on the acorn and comes off easily, the acorn is ripe. If you are picking them up off the ground, do your gathering daily to prevent dropped acorns from spending too much time exposed to heat while lying on the ground and drying out. Discard acorns with blemishes, cracks, or small wormholes. Or you can use the water test. Dump your acorns into a bucket of water and discard the floaters. Assure that you know the species of the acorns you are gathering and store them properly. This means assuring that the acorns stay cool and don't dry out. Store them in a one gallon Ziploc bag in a single layer. Line the bag with a folded damp paper towel and check the towel for dampness periodically. And finally, refrigerate at between 33 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit until planting. We assume your acorns have been stored as we specified. We will now divide our oak species into three categories, white, red, or intermediate. As seen in the three diagrams, valley oak, blue oak, and Oregon white oak are in the white category. Black oak and interior live oak are in the red category. Canyon live oak is alone in the intermediate category. Oaks in the white category produce acorns annually, while those in the red and intermediate categories are biennial acorn producers. Acorns in the white category germinate quickly and easily and don't require much refrigeration to germinate. Don't plant these before the first rain, but you can plant soon thereafter and you will probably see the germination beginnings before you do. Look at the right-hand image on the screen. You can see the beginnings of a root growing out of the pointed end of the acorn. Acorns in both the red and intermediate categories take longer to germinate and you should check each storage bag periodically to see if germination has begun. If it has, plant them. But if three months have gone by without any germination showing, plant them anyway. These black oak acorns are in various stages of germination. Those in the top image have sprouted or are just beginning to sprout. What is interesting about these two collections is that they were harvested off the ground in early February. The acorns were lying on a bed of leaf mulch below the tree. The aspect was facing northeast and the elevation was 2,600 feet. The location was at the bottom of a slope flattening out. The site received early morning sun only with a temperature at dawn of between 20 and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What resulted is acorn germination without resort to early harvest and refrigeration in a dampened plastic bag for two or three months. This is what happens naturally, sometimes. The black oak acorns in the bottom image were placed in a Ziploc bag with dampened paper towels and were planted a week after gathering. This illustrates germination occurring naturally when conditions are right and the acorns haven't dried out. Given the species of your acorns, understand where in the Sierra your tree will do well. 
elevation, shade, and soil tolerance, and what kind of slope and topography would best suit the tree. You must also consider how the vegetation on your site will change as the years go by. If you plant shade intolerant oaks near juvenile conifers, those conifers might create a shady situation that is unhealthy for your oaks when the conifers grow larger. In short, you need to consider how your site will evolve over time. You should also avoid planting locations that are too close to power lines, structures, and ground areas that receive irrigation during the spring, summer, and fall. Planting is easy. Dig a hole 18 inches deep and 12 inches in diameter. Remove any rocks and fill in the hole with the dirt you dug out, tamping it down lightly. Dig a small hole in the center, approximately one inch deep. Lay the acorn on its side. If germination has occurred, punch a hole with a pencil and place the end of the small root in the pencil hole. Cover the acorn over with dirt. Next, center your protective sleeve over the buried acorn and fix the position of the sleeve with sticks or rods at least 24 inches long and driven into the ground. The sleeve protects the planting against acorn robbers and later from browsing deer. The protective sleeve can be constructed out of steel mesh rolled to form an 8 inch diameter tube. You can also buy seedling protector tubes made of plastic from a forestry supply house. Be aware, however, that plastic tubes degrade in sunlight and have a maximum life of about two years. You must replace the protective sleeve with something larger as the seedling tree grows. Seedling trees are candy to deer, and the tree will require protection for several years. Oaks require post-planting care if they are to survive. Keep the area around the seedling tree free of weeds for a two to four foot radius. The tree doesn't tolerate competition for moisture from weeds. Enlarge the protection screen as needed to accommodate growth. Irrigate deeply two or three times during the hottest part of the summer. One to two gallons will do the job. And finally, keep plenty of mulch around the seedling to conserve moisture, but take care to keep the mulch an inch away from the stem. We have just finished part four of our series on oak management in Mariposa County, California, and it's the last video in the series. In part one, we introduced the oak family by describing its contribution to forest ecology, and we named and described the most common oak species in our area. In part two, we showed you the various kinds of disturbances oaks can experience. There are harmful ones, such as drought, summer watering, high intensity fires, and physical disturbance by humans. And of course, there are also helpful disturbances, such as low-intensity fires from periodic prescribed burning. In part three, we listed the methods humans use to manage oaks. This includes identification and control of diseases, pests, and parasites, and removal of excess plants and other fuel which could cause tree injury or death in case of a wildfire. And finally, in this video, we described how to propagate oaks from acorns. Thank you for viewing the series on oaks, which are such an important component of our forest ecosystem. And we hope you will explore our other videos. Please use the comment feature below to submit feedback. There will be new videos added in the future, and you can be notified of their release by subscribing to our channel.